Well, the question is how we can bring in tasks within the experiences of our students. Or in other words, how we can design tasks which are relate, relatable to students' personal experiences, which they can easily relate with and which, which they can easily do. Right. So we will discuss this element here. In this regard, uh, evidence suggests, for example, Nation in his book, ESL, EFL, Teaching ESL, Reading and Writing, suggests that the use of greater readers is important. And uh, you might remember very well when I discussed uh, how to teach reading skill, I gave lots of examples of graded readers. Graded readers are published by Oxford Book or Macmillan or Cambridge, and they are simplified versions of complex texts. For example, you may have heard uh, uh, Thomas Hardy's uh, Tess of Dear Virvils, and it's, it's written in a simplified version. And then uh, it's written by keeping in view the level of the students, to what extent, to what level this text can be suggested. So the first 300 words of vocabulary a uh, student should be able to read at stage one. Uh, I'm giving elementary level example. And this example is important. So uh, unsimplified texts, for example, the use of graded readers, uh, have their own positive implications in terms of enhancing the motivation of the students, in terms of uh, developing their proficiency, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of making them easy with the reading text. So, if if um, if we give them texts which are difficult to read, and they want to use those texts for writing purposes, then they are much likely to fall back to the dictionary and use it again and again. So, elementary level of grader readers can have very motivating effect. So, uh, uh, this is how we need to design tasks keeping in view the level of the student. I mean, the elementary level, first 300 words, um, uh, in uh, middle level, second 300 words, and so on. Right. And in this regard, it's important to remember the role of the teacher. And this is what we need to perform our roles while teaching read, uh, writing skill. A uh, teacher actually, uh, I'm going to give you an example, very useful one uh, to teach writing. Teacher actually sits with the students uh, and um, uh, give them the task to draw a picture. And student in groups uh, actually uh, tell a story about the picture they have drawn. The teacher uh, continues to write what the student actually discusses. And in this regard, it's important that the students uh, discuss uh, the picture in, in the target language. They, they, there is less light, I mean, they make less use of the first language. Uh, and then teacher continues to write what they speak, and this becomes student's reading text. And then they are asked to write a story in their own words. And this is how we can bring in tasks into the direct experience of our students. Uh, then we can give them reading text with problem-solving activities, uh, and we can engage our students' work in groups. Uh, well, uh, when we give them tasks to write, it's important to keep in view the role of the first language. I mean, when they are brainstorming or having oral discussion, they can rely to uh, rely on their first language in terms of sharing knowledge. But it, it should it should shouldn't be allowed that too much. Then actually, students do the activity, write about the picture individually. 
So there are various ways of controlling task. For example, it can start from brainstorming to oral discussion to uh, drawing a picture, then discussing that picture and teacher's role as a facilitator writing about the picture. And this is how the story becomes an input for the student. And then the student write about the, uh, the picture or the story overall individually. So there are, uh, uh, the purpose of giving such an example uh, is to help you understand that there are various ways of controlling tasks and bringing tasks into the experiences of the students.